Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Zephron Olive, and it's time for another instant deck tech. So today we're heading to Standard to get one more look at one of my favorite cards before it rotates, and that is Starfield of Nyx. This is Bant Starfield, recently took Reed McCullough to a top 8 finish at a SCG Super IQ, so congrats to Reed on their finish with the deck. A quick reminder before we break it all down, if you enjoy this deck and want to see it made into videos, take a minute, click the like button, the subscribe button, leave a comment, anything you can do to support your deck, because whichever deck is most popular gets a shot at being made into videos next week. So before we jump into the cards, it is worth pointing out real quick, 55 bucks in the paper world, 20 ticks on Magic Online, so super cheap. The deck is built around Starfield of Nyx. This card is just so sweet. A 5-mana enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you get to reanimate an enchantment. And as long as you have 5 or more enchantments, each non-aura enchantment becomes a creature with power and toughness equal to its converted mana cost. So basically... Starfield of Nyx is how you win the game. You play a bunch of enchantments, sooner or later, you drop your Starfield, turn them all into creatures, and just beat down with your enchantments. If some of your enchantments die, you don't especially matter because you can always reanimate them with Starfield. And then, of course, we have Sigil of the Empty Throne, Another finisher, really, these are the only two ways the deck wins the game. Uh, so if you're not beating down with animated enchantments, thanks to Starfield, you're casting enchantments, triggering Sigil, making a bunch of 4-4 four, four angels, and beating down and winning that way. So these are kind of the finishers, the cards that make the deck work. We also have a bit of ramp, in a weird way. Herald of the Pantheon, the only creature in the deck. Makes enchantments cost one less, plus it gains you a bunch of life. If it sticks around and doesn't just die, you're gaining life every time you cast an enchantment, which is a pretty big deal and can help swing the race. And then we have a couple of enchantments that are really good with Starfield in specific. Lunar Force is one of the sweet new additions for this deck. It's a counter spell. That's an enchantment. The problem is... Whenever your opponent casts a spell, you sack it and you counter it, so you don't really have much control over what you counter. The good news is that picture you're in the late game, both players are playing off the top of their deck, you have a Lunar Force on the battlefield, your opponent draws their threat for the turn, they cast it, you sack Lunar Force, counter it, then your next turn you reanimate it with Starfield the next, the next turn your opponent has, they draw their spell, go to cast it, Lunar Force counters it. Essentially, you can kind of lock your opponent out of the game to some extent, thanks to just consistently reanimating Lunar Force again and again with Starfield. Oath of Jace has a loop of its own, since it's legendary. If you have two Oath of Jace, you cast one, you get to draw and discard. Then when you cast a second one, you gotta sack one of them, thanks to the legend rule. So then you can just keep reanimating a Oath of Jace and sacking one each turn, so you're just cycling through your deck, finding your answers, finding your finishers, whatever you need to close out the game. Then we just have a ton of removal. Stasis Snare hits all creatures. Silk Wrap hits cheap creatures. Quarantine Field can also get Planeswalkers. Those three are sweet and specific because they're not auras, which means they're eventually going to turn into creatures. Three threes and two twos makes an army of enchantments. You beat down and win the game. And Prison in the Moon is another new addition from Eldritch Moon. The nice part of this one is it gets a creature or a land or a Planeswalker. So one of the things that was annoying for Starfield in the past because a lot of the enchantments are sorcery speed the removal based enchantments were creature land so if your opponent has shambling vents for example it's really hard to deal with that or a lumbering fall since it has hexproof well imprisoned in the moon can target those lands while they are in land form and just turns them into a regular colorless land that can't attack can't do any of that stuff so it's an awesome new addition to the deck even though it doesn't turn into a creature since it's an aura and then you got some weird stuff for specific matchups hollow moonlight fights against collected company also dredgy type decks that are getting back prize to melgum orbs of warding shuts down burn spells thermo alchemist shuts down emerkel's ultimate anything that targets you also decent against go wide creature decks because it keeps preventing that one damage which is actually relevant if your opponent's board is full of two powered creatures or one powered creatures it takes a lot longer for them to kill you and then some anticipates to cycle through find sigils and star fields whatever pieces you need and negates to deal with non-creature spells from the opponent 
As far as the mana base, a bunch of dual lands, including Lumbering Falls, has some additional beatdown creature finisher type effects. And then a single Rogue's Passage, which is really odd. I guess the idea is you make your enchantments unblockable, like your 5-5 Sigil once it's animated. Seems kind of weird, though. And then just some basic lands. As far as the sideboard, we get a bunch more enchantments. Suppression Mons, another way to deal with Planeswalkers, creatures, any non-land. Also shuts down activated abilities. And then Pacifism good for creatures, peace of mind for aggressive matchups to gain a bit of life, and then some more counters, dispels, collected companies, wins counter wars, summary dismissal, mostly for Eldrazi where you can get their when cast trigger countered as well, and then just a planner outburst to sweep away the board. And that is Bant Starfield for Standard. Deck looks really sweet, looks really fun, I love Starfield and Nex. Anyway, that's been our instant deck tech for today. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you soon.